Hi everyone, my name is Victor and I am one of the authors of Technic.com. Today we're going to be looking at the introduction to Ansible. We're going to be looking at what Ansible is, the basic overview of Ansible, the features of Ansible. So this is just an introductory class to Ansible. So what is Ansible? Ansible is an easy to deploy software used for automation and orchestration of IT tasks, tasks such as configuration, and management of numerous computers in a network environment. So for example, say I have hundreds of computers, I have thousands of computers, and I want to manage these computers easily. With the use of Ansible, I can do that. So I'm just going to give an instance. So say I want to um, install patches on thousands of computers, or I want to install um, the container tools on, on thousands of nodes. With the use of Ansible, I can just do this um, at one click and and the installation is going to take place so I don't have to go to all the servers and do the installation manually or one by one and uh, what Ansible can also do for me is to automate my processes and orchestrate my processes so for example if I want to deploy the Apache web server you know normally when you want to do this on your system what you need to do is to um, enable the repository after you enable the repository then you do yum or dnf install httpd and after that you allow the um, service in in the firewall rule all of these things have been done manually but, but with the use of ansible you can do this automation you don't have to do all of that manually at one click all of these things will be done for you all the deployments will be done for you so that is what ansible can do for you and that is why um, i've said that ansible is a software that is used for automation and orchestration of IT tasks. It can do a lot of um, IT tasks um, automatically for you. So that, that is what Ansible is. So let us look at how Ansible works. So the Ansible software is similar to a server client based system. And to use Ansible, there must be at least two nodes. Yes, of course, there must be the Ansible control node. That is, um, that is the server where you're going to be installing the Ansible software and there must also be the managed host that is the servers that the Ansible node is going to manage all right and if you look at this diagram um, you can see that I have um, Ansible control node I have um, SSH plugin I have what is called inventory managed host task module playbook this is just an overview of the Ansible the basic overview of the Ansible architecture all right so let's understand what all of this means let's start with the Ansible control node like I've said I said the Ansible control node is the node where you're going to be installing the Ansible software on and so let's talk about the managed host like I've also said the managed host at the host the Ansible control node is going to be managing all right so you can have um hundreds of managed hosts you can have thousands of managed hosts so let's talk about inventory the inventory is the um it's, it's, it's just like a repository where you have the managed host so it contains the information of the managed host so an inventory can um, be grouped you can have managed host being grouped in the inventory like for example i can have managed host one and managed host two and they are being grouped together and they can also be single so it depends on how you want to define your managed host in the inventory but the inventory just contains the information of, of the managed host so let's talk about the um, SSH plugin so the um, Ansible plugin the default Ansible plugin is the SSH so what connects the Ansible control node and the managed host is the Ansible plugin and for Linux machines, of course, you know that by default, SSH is shipped with Linux machine. So SSH is sufficient for um, the connection or the interaction between the Ansible control node and the managed host for Linux machines. But for Windows or other um, Windows related instances, because they don't have SSH, so you might want to consider using another plugin. And of course, um, Ansible 2 is shipped with um, some numbers of plugins. But for Linux machines, SSH is sufficient, and that is why Ansible is agentless. You don't need to install one agent on the managed host, and then um, the agent will now be the um, 
the the medium of the connection between the Ansible control node and the managed nodes. No, that is not what is happening in Ansible. With Ansible, you don't need any agent. SSH is very very sufficient, and because you have a Python uh, program here, it will be able to interpret all the Ansible operations. So let's talk about the module or task. The modules are small programs or rather units of code, Python code specifically, with tasks that are executed from the control node against or on the managed on the managed host. So what I'm saying basically is that modules are tasks. Alright? So if I say this is the task, my first task, the first task is install engine hex. Alright? So the module contains those codes with task and for you to be able to execute the task you need some tools and the tools that would enable you to execute task or modules in Ansible are the playbook or the hard doc so let's look at what um, a playbook is like I've said you need um, a tool to be able to execute task in Linux so the Ansible playbook is a feature in Ansible that contains units of scripts with instructions and tasks and these scripts are just simple files written in YAML all right so um, as we go on in this course you would understand um, how to use the basic YAML syntaxes and when we're creating our playbook you understand how to um, do that and also ad hoc is just the from the word ad hoc is just the simple it's just a simple uh, or basic Ansible command used to execute Ansible task. So it's either you use a playbook to execute Ansible task or you use the ad hoc command to um, execute the Ansible ta task. So the summary of everything we've been saying, the summary of the uh, basic overview of the Ansible architecture is this. One, Ansible will be installed on the control node. Secondly, the inventory files which contains the managed host will be created on the control node. Thirdly, playbook files will be created and the playbook data will contain plays and modules or tasks. And fourthly, the SSH plugin will be responsible for the connection between the control node and the managed nodes. And this makes Ansible agentless. So um, if you want to learn more about the introductory class, like the advantages of Ansible and other stuff, you can come to this website. I'm going to be dropping the link to this website in the description section below but for the video um, this is where i'm going to end the lesson and in the next lesson we're going to look at the step-by-step -step process of how to install the ansible software so um thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you have not all right and we have many interesting courses that are coming up and we don't want you to miss out and and also that is one of the ways you can encourage and support us by subscribing by liking the videos and by sharing our videos. So thank you once more. Bye for now.